I wanted to do a quick discussion video of um, using VoiceThread. Now, a lot of students are actually having some difficulties accessing VoiceThread that I don't think has anything to do with user error. I actually have an appointment later today to talk with some people at UITS um, and figure out if I can get a little bit more guidance about what's happening and why students are sometimes having a hard time accessing VoiceThread. Um, I do recommend um, going in and making an appointment where you can bring in your computer and you can say, I have all of the right position, um, permissions, um, but for some reason, it doesn't look as if I do. Um, I'm able to tell that everyone has the right permissions simply because some people in the class are able to access VoiceThread and access the lecture in the right way. Um, so I think, you know, and everybody's permissions are identical. Um, so I think what's happening here is that there have been some changes to VoiceThread and then people's particular technological setup, like depending on the browser you have or whether you're running a Mac or a PC or what kind of plugins you have going on um, are creating conflicts and problems with VoiceThread. I think it'll be helpful for me to talk with them and see if they have some sort of general tips and then that might help me sort of troubleshoot for everyone else. Um, but at any rate, um, in part because we're having this problem, we're going to do something a little bit dif different with this week's voice, th um, voice thread. So what you're going to be doing is actually creating your own voice thread and then adding it to what's called a thread box, which is essentially sort of a way for everybody to see the voice threads that we've all created. Um, so I'm going to walk you through how you would go about doing that. Um, and the first thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and create a voice thread um, myself. So I go into voice thread right here. You always want to open it up in a new tab. Then you want to click on, um, doesn't really matter. I'm going to go to course view. It's usually the best thing to do. Um, what I'm going to do then, you're going to go here and click on, well, I'm actually going to go to VoiceThread Home, which you probably do want to do. Go to the VoiceThread Home. And now, what you want to do, you can see that there's a lot of content here for me. I have, have used VoiceThread quite a bit. Um, you're going to click on the Create button, and it says Add Media. This is just enabling you to, you know, you're going to add it. What I recommend is using Google Slides or PowerPoint to create some slides. You drop it there. You give it a name. Sample VoiceThread. You save it. Um, I'm not actually going to add any comments to it because um, although you need to like work to record audio for your presentation, but since this is a tutorial video, you probably don't want to wait for me to do that. And then you click on share. Um, what you're going to want to do is probably do secure. You're going to scroll down and find ESOC 330 Spring 18. You click on that. Um, you want them to be able to access it um, and actually access and comment. Go ahead and click share. Don't notify everybody by email because we don't need to email everybody. Um, you click that's success. So it's shared with the class. Um, now there's actually another extra step because if we keep doing this, what we're going to find is that um, our course form page ends up being really difficult to navigate and you won't be able to tell like what things are created for what. So there's an extra thing that you need to do before you've completed sub like submitting the assignment. So we're going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and say back to home. I can tell that I just created it. It says sample voice thread. And now I'm going to go back into our um, D2L page and I'm going to go click on January 16th, Ethical Toolbox Spot Part 2. This is going to look slightly different than what you set up because um, actually I won't, I'll lose my permissions if I click in over to the student and so it won't let me add anything to the voice box. Um, but you'll get the right idea, I think, by um, or kind of get a sense of how this is going to look um, anyway. It doesn't look too different. So now I have this voice box. Um, no voice threads found. I'm going to go ahead and add my own. I'm going to select from my voice threads and I just click on the voice thread that I just added and I save it to the thread box. And so there it is. It's now been added to the right spot. Now, um, what we're going to do Let's close this out. So we're going to just double check that this is here. Um, I always think it's a good idea to double check that you've done it. So we're actually just going to close this, um, these voice thread windows. We're going to go back to January 16th. 
I want to verify that I've added it to the voice thread box. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the link again. And this time it shows me that there is a sample voice thread there. So I know that I've added it. So that's what you're going to do in order to add your um, voice threads to the voice box. Um, and then I'll be going in and being able to see what everybody's posted and I can comment and answer your content related questions, which is going to set us up really nicely for the quiz.